Welcome back. Glad you chose to subscribe and dial into our course. Keeping Cyber Simple. Yes, there really is nothing new under the sun. Okay, going into this block or this module, <clears throat> we're going to talk about risk management with respect to uh, cybersecurity and within the realm of cybersecurity fundamentals. So, where are we at in the course? Like I said, we are still in, we, in module one. We're in part one. We're going to talk risk management. We're going to get into some cybersecurity principles as well as uh, identification, authentication. We'll talk access controls, round it off with access management or account management. And you know what? I think there's a quiz at the end of this one. Okay, let's get into this. So, when we talk about risk, well, here again, keeping it simple. You see, People have been taking advantage of other people for as long as I guess time has existed. If you you know the the Nigerian print scam, you know the one where if you will send me X amount of dollars and I will do this for you. Well, that scam is actually older than the country of Nigeria. I like the way <clears throat> Ben Franklin put that. He said, "In this world, nothing can be said can said to be certain except death, taxes, and we added one to that and scams. Yeah, somebody's going to scam you. You know and." Even in the like the mid nineteenth century, you know, that they, they even saw a rise of what they call matrimonial advertisement scammers. Yeah, these were people, you know, very debonair young men who would uh, put advertisements in newspapers to get, you know, unbeknownst young ladies to take advantage of them so that they could, you know, get their money to get their their inheritance and things of that nature. So you see, scams have been around. So when we think about cybersecurity, same thing. We're just trying to protect. Uh, against someone to and an someone trying to exploit or take advantage of us. So that takes us to risk. Everything we do in this life involves risk, right? So what is risk? Okay, good question. I'm glad you asked that. Risk, and this is the risk definition. So anybody, if you're out there and you, you're preparing for your Security Plus or your CISSP or any uh, certifica certification, you know, this is going to pop up pretty much in the first chapter or the first domain understanding risk risk is the likelihood of a threat or a threat agent taking advantage of a vulnerability and the corresponding business impacts very important if there's no impact then the, the risk is pretty low okay let's think about this so what risk really does risk ties things together it ties vulnerability it ties threat and the likelihood of exploitation together so now we can understand what type of impacts this will have on our organization, on our on our valued assets, or critically protected information. Risk has different components, and we, we we mentioned those, but let's go a little bit deeper into these. So, a vulnerability. What is the vulnerability? A vulnerability is a weakness, right? That may prevent, may provide an attacker the opportunity to obtain authorized and access. You know, think about it this way. Anything. There are many vulnerabilities. Okay, uh, I can leave my window and my car open. That's a vulnerability. Doesn't mean that something's going to happen. It just means that now that car is more vulnerable to being uh, broken into as, as opposed to when the window was probably worn, rolled up. Or it's more vulnerable to having rain to come in if, if, if the, the weather changes. So vulnerabilities, you know, there's a whole heap. Yes, a whole heap of vulnerabilities out there that we have to deal with. But the thing we now have to look at is a threat. <clears throat> if we have a vulnerability and there's no threat or a threat agent, then our risk is relatively low, right? Okay, so what is the threat? A natural or man-made event that can cause some type of negative impact on your organization. A threat requires a vulnerability to create an impact. So you see there is a, uh, a link between threats and vulnerability. And a threat agent, that's an actual person or an entity of some type that actually takes advantage of a vulnerability, right? So, and how I like to put this into pers perspective, uh, okay, now if I told you that, you know, this morning, before I started making this video, um, we left our back door open to our house. We were going to go to Costco and get pick some stuff. We left, and our back door was left open. What do you think? High risk? And I'm probably saying, yeah, yeah, you left the door open. Well, if I told you that we lived in an uh, apartment on the 15th floor of an apartment building, and we left the back, the back door to the, to the little patio out there open, now you see the actual risk has reduced drastically because of exposure. I have limited my exposure. So you see there, they, all of these things really work together. They fit together. Vulnerabilities, threat, threat agent, and exposure. So and that's what we really try to do from a prevention perspective within the realm of cybersecurity or security is to reduce what they call the attack surface or exposure. The, the less exposure 
our vulnerabilities have, the harder it is for a threat or a threat agent to exploit them. Now, what is a countermeasure? In the world of security, you'll hear these called controls. Okay, but a countermeasure is any type of control, any type of, of um, control I put in place to mitigate that the potential risk. A countermeasure reduces the possibility that a threat agent will be able to exploit a vulnerability and produce some type of impact. So vulnerabilities, threats, threat agents, exposures, and countermeasures, all right? So risk, when we talk about risk, there are certain things we can do with risk, okay? There are four major things. Yeah, actually, there's a couple more that I don't have in here, but these are the four big ones that you can do with risk. First, you can avoid it, avoidance. What is that? That's where you try to eliminate the cause altogether. Okay, here's an example. If I live in a neighborhood where there's a high risk that my car will get broken into, this is how I eliminate that risk. I sail my car. Ha! Yes. Now my I have avoided the risk of someone breaking into my car. A risk avoidance. Okay. Another thing we can do at risk is transfer. Okay. Now let's say that oh, I can't sell my car, but I because because I still have to get to work every day. But I can buy insurance, and all of us have insurance. So what I've done then, I've transferred my risk from me to USAA, Allstate, State Farm, whoever it may be. I've transferred the risk. I can no longer, I can't afford to avoid it because I have to have a car, but I'm going to transfer the risk so that if my car gets broken into, then but my insurance company, they have taken on that risk for me. Now, at a cost, I have to pay for that. Another thing I can do, if I can't afford you know, really good insurance, still need a car, I just accept the risk. That is, means I park on the street every day and I go to bed hoping that nobody will break into my car. That's acknowledging that the risk exist and I accept the consequences, that I don't have insurance, all I'm gonna put is liability on my car and I don't have, you know, comprehensive or any other coverages, right? So that's a, uh, that is how I just accept the risk. I can't afford to transfer it, but I still can't afford to avoid it altogether. And the last thing we can do is mitigate. Mitigate, what is that? That's actions to protect against attacks. Here, now, what do I do? Well, I stop parking on the street and I park my car in the garage. So I have reduced or I have mitigated that risk um, down to some acceptable level. Risk mitigation. And when it comes to risk mitigation, really from a cybersecurity perspective, we are key stakeholders in risk mitigation. This is why, you know, when we look at all of our different types of uh, frameworks that, that deal with cybersecurity or, or they are all built around security controls, hundreds and hundreds of controls that we try to put in place to mitigate the risk, to reduce risk to an acceptable level. So yeah, risk mitigation. So when we think about cybersecurity, right, and its role in risk mitigation, and this is really like in your organization where you work, or so this this, this little scenario that I'm going to walk through, you know, like I say, it's it's like making shaved ice. Well, kinda, kinda like making shaved ice. You know what shaved ice is, right? You know the, the, those little cups, little paper cups. You know, that looks like a, a a cone, and you get the ice in it, and they put that syrup on top of it, and mmm, mmm, and it's delicious. Well. What we do from a cybersecurity role is very similar to that in a way. Now, here's what I mean. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we have a customer within our organization. And this kid, he's the customer. He wants some shaved ice. He loves his shaved ice in the summer. So do I. It's good stuff. So how does the, a, a business, you know, that little truck that comes along, or, or we have a, a, a store you go to and you're going to buy, how does that happen? How do we get this individual the shaved ice? Well, first it starts with we gotta have water. To make shaved ice, you gotta have water. And now, so we go from the city water, you know, to, that we have to get it to our manufacturer or our, our location where we're gonna make the shaved ice. This is who your IT guys are. I, I relate to our IT networking team to, they provide that level of connectivity. They're kind of like the plumbers. They are ensure that the pipes, the networking pipes are connected together and that, that that the water can flow in the pipe, okay? So from there though, that's where it comes to us from a cyber perspective. We are like the city water inspector. Now, you may say that, wait a minute, I, I've, I've been taking courses and there's a lot of networking that we learn in cybersecurity. You're right, why? Because these two competencies, even though they, they operate in the same space, they have similar skill sets, their focus, the focus is very different. Here's what I mean. Okay, 
<clears throat> and this guy right here, this plumber, he is excellent at connecting pipes and getting the water from the city water into your building. However, if you probably ask him about the rust content or what is the pH balance of that water, probably wouldn't be able to tell you that. That is what this city water inspector, on the other hand, concerned about the quality of the water in the pipe. That is how we are from a cyber perspective. Yes, we work closely with, with the IT to get information from point A to point B, however, or point A to point C. However, we want to ensure that the confidentiality, integrity, and the availability of the information is there. So we want to ensure that, that the quality of the information from a security perspective is in place. Yes, similar skill sets. Yes, we, we share multiple skill sets. Focus different, different focus. Okay, so it comes there, then, then what happens to it? Well, it goes to this little machine, right? This little machine that, sh that crushes your ice, shaves it, and drops it in the cup. So this is the input, is water. Output is value. This is in an organization, in a company. This is the value stream. This is where we take a raw materials, wherever you work, okay? No matter where it is, it could be McDonald's, it doesn't matter. They're taking raw materials, potatoes, beef, whatever it may be, you know, corn syrup, corn, and, and they take it through a process where they add some type of value to it, where they'll cook it, make a sandwich out of it, and now they can sell it for more than they bought it for. That's the value stream within an organization, okay? So these are, and in this analogy, this is analogous to the information systems in our organization because they add to the value stream so that we can provide our customer of the, whatever that output product of the business that you work, that have to provide that customer with that output. So we've taken a raw material, we've put in the infrastructure to get that raw material in, we ensure the quality of that material is good and value stream to customer. In a, in a, from a cyber perspective to say, or at IT, we bring information in through our information systems, through our networks, cyber, we wanna ensure that the quality of that information, the confidentiality, the integrity, the availability, everything is there associated with that. So when it hits this value stream, that now our information systems can process that for the decision-making, for analysis, for things that our leadership and our companies need to do to provide a product to a customer. But in the process of doing all that, yes. Is there a risk? There is. So we are really in the role of mitigating the risk that would uh, hinder information, that information and that value stream flow. So that is really from a cyber perspective. This is how our role, this is where we fit into an organization. Just think shaved ice. Okay. When you go to work Monday, tell you, and, and your boss comes out and you ask him, what are you doing today? I am making shaved ice and I'm keeping it safe for the customer. Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So how do we do that? How do we, uh, mitigate risk, how do we make these things happen? I kind of mentioned it earlier, but now we're gonna go a little deeper into it. We use our, what we call our cyber security principles. And there's some, some things that are very fundamental. And I will tell you this, guys, if you capture this, this makes everything else make sense from a cyber security perspective. If you're studying again for a certification, uh, let's say security plus, these core things we're gonna talk about, if you, everything else stems from these core concepts. Okay, hopefully it makes simple, keeping it simple. All right, so we, we mentioned this cybersecurity triad, the CIA triad of confidentiality, integrity, availability. What does that really mean? All right, let's talk about confidentiality, right? Confidentiality is the pro principle that information or data is not disclosed to unauthorized subjects, okay? Keeping things confidential. This is where we, most many times, we use a, a concept we call encryption we encrypt okay now you may say well what is encryption and, and that sounds like something cryptography and all these big words we, you know what in our life we do this every day especially if you speak a foreign language let's say you are a native spanish speaker right but you, you know english also well you use this concept of encryption especially if you want to keep some information from somebody in your environment that you don't want them to hear all right here's what i mean Let's say that you and your, your, your brother or your sister your, or your spouse, you and your spouse can both speak Spanish and you both speak English. The kids are around. They haven't learned Spanish. So you start a conversation in English, right? 
and you see the kids coming. So what do you do? You flipped over. Okay, let's encrypt this conversation. So you go to Spanish. Boom. You both are speaking Spanish. You've encrypted this conversation in Spanish because you know that the, the young kids aren't able to speak, Spanish, or at least you think they can't speak Spanish yet. They're probably able to decrypt more than you know. But that's, and I know I see it at work, you know, people come out and they start speaking Spanish. Why? Because they think that more people in the environment cannot speak Spanish, so they don't know what we're saying. So they are keeping that conversation confident, confidentiality. You've just, you've just learned cryptography 101, okay? Actually, I'm gonna use that same scenario later on another course, what I will teach on cryptography. All right, but that's, that's another course for another day. Another concept of the I, integrity. That's the principle that information and data will retain its trustworthiness or it hadn't changed from the time that you made it to the time that it's being consumed, okay? There's no unauthorized modifications. So that is what, and that is a very critical thing, especially let's say if you're in the banking industry. If you're in the banking industry, here's what I mean. Because as a banking customer, we're concerned, you know, me as a customer, yes, I'm concerned about the confidentiality of my account. Yes, I am. I don't want people to see my, my balance. But however, I am really more concerned about the integrity. Here's what I mean. So that, so let's say payday comes along and I know that I got paid $1,000 and $1,000 should have gone into my savings account. And I'll go over and I go to an ATM machine and I check, or my phone app, and I check my balance and there's only $4.21. Now we have an integrity issue, okay? I'm less concerned about who can see my account because now I am more concerned that there is something that's happened that the integrity of my money has changed from the, from the time that the $1,000 that my employer HR department put into the account to the time I go look at it and it's different. So that's integrity. And the last part of that is availability. What is availability? That's the concept that I want to be sure that my information is available when I need it, that the data is readily accessible. Again, banking industry, they're concerned about that. Wow, because you go to an ATM machine and you pop in your, your card and it says that this ATM is out of service. Availability. You can't get to your money when you need it. CIA, like I say, everything else you're gonna talk about ties back to one of these three. We can track pretty much everything back to this. And what does it track back to here? It really does track back to our information access model. Now, I will tell you, from a cybersecurity perspective, at least 75, I'm making this number up, you know, but 75% of the things you do during, during the day is to control access. You look at the security in your home, it's built around what? An access control model. Yes, an access control, your very house. And I'll, we'll walk through that. But yes, control, because at the end of the day, we have information, we have data or information that's sitting somewhere and we have people who want to get to it. They can either be authorized or not authorized. Our job is to help um, control access. So when we think about access control, five principles, identification, authorization, uh, I mean, authentication, I'm sorry, authorization, access control, and auditing identification what is identification that is when i want to prove that i am who i say that i am how do i do that well i like here again another analogy okay i walk up to your house and i ring your doorbell and say hey yes i'm the instructor off of udemy that that uh, records courses and i saw that you were a student are you just going to open the door and let me in especially let's say if it's two o'clock in the morning no you're going to want to, you know, uh, some identification. So I just identified myself. Next question. Are you just going to trust me because I said that I am who did I say that I am? No, you're going to want to authenticate that information, right? Yeah, that identification. So I'm going to have to show you something to authenticate it. Same thing happens on our network. Let's say you go have a, go to, to, to log in to your home network and you type in a username, you know, L Watlington or whatever, G Watlington, uh, you know, R Smith. You have just provided that your your information system, your computer identification. What do you do? Is it going to let you in just because you provide identification? No, you've got to provide something else. You've got to provide some form of authentication. Authentication. So what is authentication? Well, that's when you're going to type in a password or a PIN of some type. So now your your computing system is going to uh, validate that password and says yes. 
I know that L. Watlington and this password matches up and then it lets you in. All right, good deal. I am in. So the same thing, just like in your house. So you authenticate my identification and you let me in your house. I walk into your house in a nice house, by the way. I just want to say I really like the house. So I'm standing here in the foyer of your, of your home and a total stranger. How far are you going to let me go into your house? Probably not very far. You're just going to only authorize me to go in a certain place, like say in the living room or in the, in the den. So I'm authorized to go into the living room. And so I walk into your formal living room and I sit down and I'm like, wow, this is great. I'm off. You've just authorized me. So now I look over and I see you've got this, uh, this really nice video game set up over there in the corner. So I want to go over there and, and grab your Oculus mask and start to put it on, right? No. Why? Because I don't have access. You have not granted me access. So even though I'm authorized to be in the room where your video, uh, I mean, where your gaming system and videos are, you have not said, given me access. So you've, this is what access control is. So on your network, even though you may be authorized to log in and go get onto the network, that does not mean you have access to go to every folder. Yeah, or you may have access to a folder. However, it doesn't mean you have access to every document that's on that folder. So we're controlling the identification. We monitor and control the authentication. We look at the authorization, what privileges you have, and then access control. Uh, can you get to, to the various resources, whether it's objects or what type of data it is? So all of these things, like I said, we do it in our home every day. You control the identification of people coming in. You author authenticate that identification. You also control where they're authorized to go. And even in those places they're authorized to go, let's say they can go into the kitchen, but you would expect them to ask, can I get something from the refrigerator? Because they may not be authorized, uh, have access to, to go into that refrigerator. And the last thing you, we do is in this scenario is audit. Audit, yes, meaning that I don't trust anybody. I don't trust myself. So of course I don't trust anybody. So we're gonna track and record all the system user activities and, and resource accesses, meaning that people have tried to get to here, tried to get to there. Just like if I came to your house and let's say you had to go you know, to the back room and I'm left in there by myself in, in the living room. Are you gonna probably go, hmm, I don't really trust this individual. So here's what you're probably gonna do. When I leave, you're gonna walk around and check everything out. Okay, nothing's missing. He didn't take my, my Meta World headset, so I'm good. We do that on the network also. We audit all these activities. So when you get when you log on, all of your activities are audited. Yeah, identification, authentication, authorization, access control, and auditing. Access control. We're gonna go a little deeper in access control, but we're gonna pick this up in the next module. Be sure we um, or in the next lesson. So be sure you tune in, return. Hope to see you back for a little more on access control.